Hello everyone. So you've joined us for week, I want to say four or five perhaps, <laughs> of Kitten Cow. Uh, we've been doing these weekly live streams um, each Wednesday around this time, uh, catching up with some of the kittens in our care. And this week, very special treat for these guys, we've got our very own cardboard castle taking centre stage. <laughs> So the kittens we've got with us this week uh, uh, belong to a mum called Riley. And mum's only just about a year old, so she's barely out of being a kitten herself. Um, sadly, quite often the case, actually, when we get um, mum cat queens, as they're called, cat mums and their kittens um, into our care, um, particularly young cat mums like Riley, um, they might find it a bit more stressful um, than perhaps an older cat. Um, and certainly in Riley's case, um, she came in because she was being fiercely protective over her kittens, as she is well within her right to be. Um, and I think her current home environment was stressing her and the kittens out a little bit. So they've come into our care, where they are now enjoying <laughs> a little bit of royal treatment with our castle. <laughs> These guys have got really adorable names as well. So we've got, they're all named after sweets. We've got Snickers, we've got Gumdrop, Jelly Bean, <laughs> Sherbet, and Licorice. So Snickers and Licorice are our two adorable black kittens that you can see here. One of the black kittens, Snickers, is our only female of the litter. So she's a rose amongst the thorns. <laughs> having a right good play down there and it's really nice to see them exploring and playing like this because actually when we first put them into the pen it can be very daunting they're coming from their pen which they currently share with mum still and when we get them out for socialization like this occasionally it can be a little bit nerve-wracking they can be a little bit anxious at first um, but they're definitely getting into the spirit of it now there you go go on grab it <laughs> Enjoying all the nooks and crannies of the castle as well. There's definitely some pouncing going on behind. What's this? And you can see here our full pen setup. Um, so we have this, and you might have seen if you've watched previous kitten cans, um, we have this lovely uh, playpen which um, gets sterilised and cleaned in between uh, each of these socialisation sessions and um, between each of the uh, kitten litters. Um, so these guys are using it today. Actually, they're very lucky because now that they've had the chance to play on this cardboard castle, it is officially theirs. So every time they get socialised for the next few weeks before they're ready to home, they'll have a chance to play on this lovely castle. <laughs> What's this? Definitely hiding around the back, aren't they? So the reason we actually uh, built this cardboard castle was um, part of our current fundraising appeal. Um, our summer appeal this year is focusing on cat mums, um, also known as cat queens. So any pregnant um, or nursing uh, cat is referred to as a queen. So we thought it was only fit to uh, build an appeal around <laughs> uh, creating some... Um, homemade cardboard castles for some of the kittens and cats in our care. So you might see, particularly if you follow any um, any local cats protection um, branches or centres on social media, you might see that some of uh, the teams are also getting involved and building um, some castles for the kittens and the cat queens in their care as well. But we're really um, urging people to give it a go, particularly now it's the summer holidays, for their own cats. You don't have to have kittens, you don't have to have a pregnant cat, but as we know, cats love cardboard boxes. 
Um, so why not kick it up a notch and turn it into a, a proper cat castle? <laughs> now, if you can see here, Ali, our socialiser today, is just doing a couple of checks on one of our kittens, one of our gorgeous tabbies. <laughs> and part of the socialisation process, as well as just having a whale of a time and playing with these gorgeous kittens, um, is about getting them used to all the things that um, they will go through when they get rehomed. So obviously, um, when these guys are sent to their new homes, vet checks um, and vet checkups will be part of their um, their ongoing life. So things like Ali checking under the tail and checking the ears and the eyes and just getting them used to being handled and trusting um, humans is really, really key to the socialisation experience because you don't want a vet visit, for example, for a cat to be any more stressful than it needs to be. <laughs> so we have a good play. And we make sure they get to practice their pouncing and their hunting skills. <laughs> and we make sure that they all get handled. Hello. And the volunteer socialisers that we have here at Cats Protection work. Um, they have a chart that they work to. So socialisation typically occurs from about two weeks till eight weeks of age. Um, for these kittens. So when they're two weeks old, um, no. the checks are f a little bit more limited, so we'll practice just holding them, holding their heads, examining their neck and sh giving them a little stroke. Um, now that these guys are six weeks old, um, we also uh, practice things with them like uh, putting on and off a collar, um, turning them over, stroking their belly. As we know, a lot of cats don't like their stomachs um, to be touched, which is absolutely fine. That's well within their right not to have people touching their stomachs. But if we can get them used to it um, at an early age as kittens, it might make them less likely to um, to react oh, negatively to it in the future. Uh, we also, um, from six weeks, uh, we make sure we examine their paws. And as Ali was doing earlier, lifting up their tail and looking under it, um, getting them used to grooming. And actually another thing that um, happens <laughs> outside of a scene like this is um, we practice restraining them on a table, which is obviously something that has to happen during a vet check. Okay. So all really important things that they're going to experience yeah, moving forward in life. Um, <laughs> and these guys are quite clingy today, aren't they, Ali? Yeah, they're, they're learning. <laughs> they're not um, entire. I'm not sure how much experience. Something that we do struggle with slightly at Cat's Protection is uh, the amount of interaction I get with men, like just because of um, yeah, the, the, the nature of our volunteers, generally quite female. So yeah, definitely with the socialization, it is um, good to get them used to a male voice and male handling, because obviously when they move to a ha home, it's more than likely that there will be one there. Hello. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, as Ali said, it's not just about uh, the kind of handling and the vet checks and stuff that we do, but it's about exposing them to different people. Um, yeah then ideally you'd, um, particularly when we have people um, for kittens, uh, as long as they're not overly nervous or anxious or have come in as a stray that um, is particularly fearful of people, um, generally kittens are okay to go to homes with children. So uh, when a family comes in to um, potentially look at one of our kittens to rehome them, we'd be looking at how they react with children, whether that's small children, slightly older children, just to make sure that they're comfortable um, to go into a home in that situation um, because the utmost priority here is obviously the cat's welfare but um, making sure that we're not putting them into a stressful situation when we rehome them. The other thing that uh, I think we've mentioned before but that we do lots of as part of socialization is we expose the kittens to different sounds so we've actually got on our website if you're interested um, there's a playlist uh, that's got all sort of everyday sounds but ones that could be quite scary to small kittens so things like vacuum cleaner um, fireworks because that's often a really big one for cats and um, around fireworks night and um, later in the year we see um, lots of people asking for advice about uh, how to keep their cats safe during fireworks and um, if we can socialize them at an early age to um, kind of accept the noises oh, those louder noises a bit like fireworks then um, oh, all the better. We've got someone up on one of the top levels. Yeah, try and climb out of the top. <laughs> <laughs> you 
you're just encouraging an escape now. Well, yeah, <laughs> hopefully not an escape. Tearing a tree apart down here. We often get questions as well when we do live streams like this about um, why we wear the protective clothing that we wear when we're socialising. Um, so it's a really important part of the socialisation progress um, process. When we're in the maternity um, part of our adoption centre, um, obviously the kittens can range from being totally newborn right through to sort of eight to ten weeks before they're ready to go onto our homing wing. Um, and kittens, as I'm sure you can imagine, are quite susceptible to infections and bacteria. And so the protective clothing is really a way for us to ensure that, A, we're not bringing any um, possible infections uh, into their area. So all of these towels you see on the floor will be freshly washed. And as we said, this cardboard castle um, will be for these kittens only. So we're not transferring any possible um, illnesses that um, these guys might develop onto any other cats and vice versa um, and then also it's really important for us not to be taking any um, possible uh, bacteria out of the centre as well um, and I guess further to that it's good for them to get used to things like um, interacting with someone with gloves on because when they are in a vet environment that may well be the case yeah. <laughs> but it, at this age it certainly doesn't seem to bother bother any of them having these if anything this one on Ali's lap looks like mm, he's loving the plastic apron. apron. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Makes good noise. Oh, <laughs> uh, no. Bigger. So if anyone watching is interested in building their own cat castle, feline fort, um, do send us your photos and videos because we love nothing more than seeing a cat in a cardboard box, particularly if it's a pimped up cardboard box. <laughs> We're running, as I said, as part of our fundraising appeal currently, um, uh, a bit of an initiative to uh, create your own cardboard castle and then donate five pounds to Cats Protection and nominate um, a friend to build their own castle. So kind of like a pass it on fun activity um, for you and your cat. And as I said, the kids, if it's summer holidays, it's a really great thing to, to do and <laughs> spread the word about. Someone down here undoing my shoelaces. We've got one over here that's um, leaning out the window, oh, bopping, the, out? bopping brother or sister on the head. <laughs> Having a whale of a time. So we've got lots of people watching, which is amazing. We like to think we're brightening up people's lunch times by doing, <laughs> by doing this. Certainly brightens Ooh. up our lunch times. Right. We've got Tracy, <laughs> who's watching with her foster kitten, Dennis. Um, Hi, Tracy and Dennis. I bet Dennis is loving this. Taking my well, Tracy, off. if you get any um, deliveries anytime soon, you've seen uh, what the power of a cardboard castle can do. We've got Stacey as well in the comments asking about um, adopting uh, kittens and cats. Um, so all of our cats and kittens um, will have sort of a geographical range that we're kind of willing to um, rehome them to. And that's purely because um, long distance travel um, can really stress cats out. So it will differ by centre or branch. But if anyone is a, uh, interested in adopting a cat or a kitten, if you pop onto our website, which is www.cats dot org dot uk um, there is at the top of the page there's a section um, for adopting a cat you'll find a page on there called find a cat and what's really great about that is you can literally put your postcode in um, 
You can even filter by, um, for example, if you have children or if you have a dog, you can filter by cats that have been um, deemed okay to go to a, a house with a dog or um, other cats or children. Um, and then you can see all the cats and kittens in your area available for adoption. Um, so kittens like this, as I said, they're still undergoing their socialisation. They're still in a pen with mum at the moment. They'll be with mum until at least eight weeks old. Um, once they're at least eight weeks old, they will... Um, we will make sure they have all their vaccinations and um, there'll be flea and worm treatment um, I think a second dose of that happens when they get home um, so the new owners will be responsible for you know keeping up <laughs> vet checks such as that they will also be neutered um, so we neuter our kittens um, before they're rehomed here at Cats Protection but we also recommend that all cats are neutered um, from four months of age Cats can reproduce really early on in life, from about four months. Um, and a lot of people don't realise that. And, you know, if you get a kitten at eight weeks, then the next eight weeks can go pretty quickly. So it's in particularly important if, you've, um, if your cat has had a litter at home and you've got male and female um, kittens to make sure that they're kept separate um, from about three or four months at least, just to make sure that there's no further accidents there until they can be um, neutered. <laughs> and while we're talking neutering, um, if anyone is looking to get their cat or kitten neutered, um, we do offer financial assistance. Um, again, you can find the information via our website, and it does vary depending on where you are in the UK, and um, it's means tested. Uh, but we have a neutering helpline, um, all of which you can find information about on our website. Yeah. We'll also put a link in the comments um, for information about neutering. But it sounds like my shoelace. He's <laughs> <It's> under your shoelace. <laughs> what are you doing? You're blowing my shoelace. Get off. <laughs> Get off. No, here. This is better. What's this? There I was literally about to say these kittens are having the life of Riley, and then I realised that's her mum's name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, they are. They are having a whale of a time on this castle. <laughs> yeah, so as I said, if anyone is looking to uh, do something a bit creative, with or for their cat this summer, <laughs> do send us your pictures and your videos of your cardboard cat castles because they make our day. We quite often share a few, particularly on Instagram and Twitter, but send us them in the Facebook comments. <laughs> Oops. Ooh, I'm through the window. And look out for your local cat's protection, possibly joining in the fun as well. We've got lots of kittens around the UK at the moment in our centres and branches with our fosterers and with our staff in our centres being really, really well looked after. But the appeal that's running at the moment is just to ensure that we can give cat mums and their kittens all the extra care that they need. Um, it costs about £100 on average to um, look after a cat mum and her kitten in the way of neutering, their flea and worm treatments, um, all their vet checks and everything while they're with us. So if you imagine £100 per <laughs> each one of these guys, <laughs> plus mum, for the eight to ten weeks that these kittens will be with us. Um, and then mum will obviously be rehomed as well. Find a lovely new home. She deserves a bit of a rest after putting up with these guys, I'd say. Maybe a nice quiet home for mum. <laughs>
was like needles. Oh, good jump. Nearly made it. Coming up here. So, Ali, is there anything else that you think is really important yeah. for owners to know or to think about when they're getting a kitten specifically over just, a cat? Just that they take a lot more, generally, I would say kittens probably take a lot more attention, especially early on, because you've yeah. got quite a lot of the socialisation you need to keep doing with them <coughs> um, to make sure they get used to everything, but they just have a lot more energy and need a lot more entertainment to stop them getting bored basically once cats get to a bit older than this they're quite happy sort of looking after themselves for a lot of the time and yeah but kittens will i mean i'm sure many of the people what viewing have seen the videos kittens will play until they literally collapse to sleep <laughs> like yeah. they will play themselves to, to sleep a lot so it is just it's just important to make sure they're getting all that stimulation because yeah as you can see here, they're just entertaining themselves with yeah, each other. Yeah. And, and, uh, and as you say, like here, they're, a lot of the time they're, I mean, you're obviously playing with them, but they're playing with their litter mates and stuff. So if you yeah. do, you know, have a solo kitten that you adopt, you're, you're then their sole entertainment, aren't you? You've yeah. got to, and, and actually the play element of it is really, really important for their development because it's not just a case of sort of entertaining oh, them oh, and playing oh, with them. Careful. It is all part of cats natural behaviors so yeah cats have evolved from <laughs> the african wild cat um which is actually a, a solitary oh. Oh. species <laughs> um so lots of people um we find lots of people asking us uh, you know perhaps they've had two cats before and maybe one of them's passed away and they're like oh should i get another cat to keep my current cat company um but generally our advice is if your cat seems happy um, and content on their own, then no, there's no need to. Um, cats don't really need company. A lot of people think that, um, you know, they might get lonely, but cats are actually a solitary species. And as long as you provide them with everything they need to fulfill their um, their natural behaviours, particularly their hunting behaviours, which is really key um, in things like play. So you can see Ali playing with this fishing rod toy for example there's a lot of pouncing going on a lot of pouncing and it's really important to make sure that like Ali's doing that the kittens are able to catch it at the end of the play so you can swing it around all you like but as long as they can actually achieve the end goal then they won't get too frustrated um, and I guess one of the other things we're teaching them here Ali is about not to go for people's hands isn't it yeah it's very <laughs> important to um, try and yeah obviously it's, it's almost natural to think oh, I'll just play with a kitten with your hands but as I've already discovered, tearing my glove, they have <laughs> little needles in their claws at this age. And um, yeah, you don't want to bring up a cat training it to play with your hands because then when they get older and um, yeah, have bigger claws and bigger teeth, they're still playing with fingers and treating it as a game. They will bite and scratch. So it's, 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 much, it's, it's important to just play with toys. And any time that you do get a nip or a scratch, especially at this age, which happens, yeah. um, you just, yeah pick up a toy, use that instead, and just don't continue to play because, yeah, we don't, it, it's, as, as I say, it's very easy for kittens to get adjusted to playing with humans by biting and scratching them, which yeah. many of us have experienced. But <laughs> it's, um, yeah, if we can avoid that at this age by socialising them as playing with toys and not attacking fingers, yeah, it's obviously... Yeah, they'll be much less likely to when they're older, won't they? Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. What's this? Tearing this one apart, aren't you? There, good job. Now we've got Marilyn in the comments saying that oh. she's had a beautiful cat from Rotherham Cats Protection. So hi to Marilyn and your cat. <laughs> Fiona's cat's also from Cats Protection. Oh, we love it when people message us and tell us that their yeah. cats are from Cats Protection and when we get sent pictures. Oh. <laughs> Quite often you'll find if you tweet us or if you tag us in an Instagram post or an Instagram story about your cat that's from Cats Protection, we will very often share those because it gets us right in the heartstrings, that does. We love seeing how Hello. all the cats that were in our care are doing at home. Okay. Got some ear checking going on over here. Yeah. 
think of them. That's the hardest part of Ali's job right now, is working out which ones he has and hasn't oh, yeah. done the checks with. Oh, all right. <laughs> I right. think they are. I was <laughs> just about to say, I think we're going kind of to lick to get these guys back to mum in their pen for a little afternoon siesta. Oh. They've had their lunch. They've played in their castle. So we might get them getting home to mum. They are getting a bit worn out, aren't they? <laughs> um, but as we said, if anyone's got any questions about kitten socialisation or about cats in general, pop um, your questions in the comments. Make sure we answer those after the live. Um, send us a message on Facebook, Instagram or Twitter. Um, we also have a national hotline if you've got any burning questions about your cat or if you've found a stray cat, anything like that. Um, we do have a phone line um, and there's a contact us page on the website as well. You can send us an email. Um, and if you are interested in supporting our summer appeal to help uh, all the cat ones and the kittens that we've got in our care at the moment and fancy giving building a castle a go, please do. As we said, we're encouraging people to uh, create their castle, donate five pounds, and then nominate a friend. And it'd be amazing to see some of your creations in the next few weeks. Thank you so much for joining us today. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you in advance for any donations and all cat castle pictures that we that we might receive. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Back through the window.